Um, so he goes on to say, if you want to revert back to the default environment, reset the flash memory, you just need to copy, copy, <laughs> Hey folks, back on the bench, back on the desk. <laughs> I guess I just should say bench and just leave it that way no matter where I'm sitting. Anyway, <laughs> follow up to the Pico video, um, to the last video on the channel. Had a message from a viewer via Facebook. Um, real quick, if you want your name mentioned, tell me in your comment. Otherwise, I won't mention your name um, because I know people are picky about their privacy, even I am. So if you want it mentioned, tell me. If not, I won't mention it. Anyway, <laughs> it says, I like your last video. I like all of the videos where you encourage the kids to work with computers and electronics. I do have a correction to the last Pico video. Pressing boot select brings up the Pico file system. If you don't press the button, it will always boot into the installed environment. If you want to revert back to the default environment, reset the flash memory, you just need to copy over the flash underscore nuke dot uf2 and it will reset the system completely. More can be found at, and then he provides a link to the appropriate documentation. So let's go take a look at that real quick. So to get to the documentation, if you didn't bookmark the URL or you'd save yourself some Googling time, if you plug back in your Pico, in boot select mode again we'll get to our documentation there's the link that takes us to the website the viewer actually provided the direct link but just to show you how to get there from the microcontrollers documentation page we're going to go to raspberry pi pico and here's all of our basic documentation the specific part he mentions is actually right here resetting the flash memory so you would need to download the flash nuke file and then throw it over on the ROM or on, yeah, on the ROM more or less, but here on the other Pico. So let me plug one in that actually has circuit Python on it. Yep. You can see right here where, uh, I don't know why that thing gets so slow when it first plugs in with circuit Python, but it lags my whole system out. So yeah, you can see that we are actually running CircuitPython on here. We still have our code example from Josh, the one that he used. Remember, we had to actually copy over that library in the last video. So let's go ahead and talk about reverting this back to the Pico's initial state. First thing I'm going to do is unplug it. I've already downloaded the uh, file here, but we'll, t we'll go ahead and download it. Again, just so you can see, flash nuke that you have to. While that's downloading, I'm gonna press and hold boot select on the Pico. I'm gonna plug it back in. Now we're there. So let's bring up my Pico folder. Here's our flash nuke. Now just to make this clear again, let me unplug that again. I'm gonna plug it back in one more time. So you can see we have CircuitPython installed on here. So I'm gonna unplug it, press boot select, plug it back in. We're gonna drag over the flash nuke file it's going to read it, do what it has to do in the background. Gave me three blinks to show me that the work is complete, and then it restarted. So right now you can see we're in Pico mode. Press and hold boot select, or uh, not going to hold boot select, sorry. So there, no circuit Python. We are completely back to the factory state. And I think that should answer that question, or at least <laughs> show what the viewer was talking about on how to reset these completely. I also had a good question come in on 
what good is a Pico? Why would you want a microcontroller versus a microcomputer, we'll just say, as the Raspberry Pi? And what's the difference between the two? Think of the Raspberry Pi itself as a small computer. But via GPIO, we get most or some, if not all, controller functions in the Pi versus the Pico, which is just a controller. Where the difference comes in is, do we need mass storage? Do we need full output video? The Pico can do limited output video, but it can't do full desktop displays. Or can it? <laughs> we'll talk about that down the road because I saw a project this morning that just made me chuckle. Um, but yeah, so you can, with just the, the Pico, think about it, it's inexpensive. So if you need a simple controller to do repetitive tasks over and over and over, you wouldn't want to invest 50, 60, 90 dollars in a full-blown Raspberry Pi if it's only going to do one task or one series of tasks. In that case, something like the Pico at four or five dollars makes a hell of a lot more sense. But yeah, we'll talk about that again in upcoming videos. I want to see where um, Jer Jeremy's now picking one up. He got one from Josh, so we may start getting both of them involved in this and give us more project ideas and things I can work on with them and then create the videos to show everybody. So we'll see how that pans out. But good resource to learn is, again, raspberrypi.org. Um, slightly different than the documentation itself, which is over at pi.com. If you think about the Pico, is that one the same? Yep, same site. <laughs> I had it open twice for some reason. But yeah, if you want more Pico-specific information, then go to raspberrypi.org, go under Projects, and find the Pico. It's all there. All right, folks, that's going to be it for this video. I'll be back in another day or so with another one. And yep, talking about the Pico. We're going to probably, I'll do a time lapse of the uh, Treatix Pico breakout board as I solder it all together and get that ready for videos. <laughs> Alright guys, we'll see you soon.